<laughs> My name is Adura Onoshile and I am a theatre and film artist. I was approached by Tiffany Boyle from Mother Tongue, who are an artist curation collective. They have been working with Maud Salter's collection for a while. Tiffany said to me that Maud had written one play, only one play in her body of work. It had never been shown to the public. And in a collaboration with National Galleries, we have put together a rehearsed reading film of Maud's play. A rehearsed reading is when the actors don't learn the lines, they have their script in hand, and you spend anything between three days and a week just exploring the text. Right, so cut. Are you sure? Are serious? It's a really yeah. good way of introducing a play without going into production and rehearsals. No. The way I think I've approached this rehearsed reading is more like archival work, because it felt like the most important thing was to document that she had explored this form, where as a visual artist, writing a play wouldn't, wasn't maybe normally what she did. It's definitely a visual take on playwriting that feels really exciting. Scene four, a deserted beach at Cape Coast. A comfortable beach hut stands nearby. There's something I must tell you. Yeah. Let me have three years. <laughs> You've never slept by a white man. That's true, no? You've never slept by any man since your children sleep. Before, no sex. Can't take me to No, big man. It is not a thing. So what is? I think I'm falling in love with you. Well done. Good. Really lovely. I think I was quite nervous about only having three days to rehearse and three days to shoot the film. And that's quite a short amount of time for what is essentially a 50 or 60 page script. But we gathered some really good actors around us who, who, who were able to bring it to life. I should be going. And then you get back to your work. I don't want to be late. That wouldn't do at all. There's money at stake, and they'll run out of gin if Betty gets to be the bartender before I get there. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll see you later, sweetheart. Eh? Don't wait up. I've, I've got a lot of paperwork on at the moment. Bye-bye. See you soon. Catch a monkey, gaze at the moon. <laughs> Big man John sees his wife to the door, and he nonchalantly makes his way out to the back of the shop, shouting to Kwaku through the doorway. Stop there. Yes. That was really good. I wonder whether you can just do more of a double look between the two of them. Look back, back. So we're absolutely clear that you know that she's got something to do with him. Yeah? For me, it was about honouring Maud's words and, and honouring sort of the ideas that she had within the play, keeping it as simple as possible because we only have three days. Really being um, passionate about documenting what she wrote. I think this big man, John, you're looking very, you know, I think she's straight for the jugular there. Yeah. You might be trying to hold it down. Yeah, but she, she's, on the she's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, really take the piss out of that, the sarcasm of that line, yeah. yeah. Um, really push him and push him and push him. Yeah, okay, cool, let's go from... One of the interesting things she does is she uses the fiction of a real character to explore her own history. So the real character is Jerry Rawlings, who was the president of Ghana, a mixed heritage man. His father was a white Scotsman and his mother was an African Ghanaian woman. And Maud is also of Scottish and Ghanaian heritage. And so through service to empire and through um, exploring a fictionalized history of Jerry Rawlins' parents, she was also able to explore her own heritage and what she thought about things. He kisses her full on the mouth. She does not desist. And what's really beautiful about the play is that at the heart of it, it's a love story. And there are certain tropes in it that are problematic, like racial tropes, misogynist tropes. But how I approached it was how I think 
Maud wrote it, which is that it was fundamentally a love story between two people who couldn't quite make it happen because of the vagaries of the time. Victoria, there's no need to run so far ahead. Things are changing, changing all around us. It charts the meeting of these two people, Jerry Rawlins' parents. Have you spoken? No one special, Mr. John. Their love affair, then the breakdown of that affair. Jerry growing up in independent post-colonial Ghana, becoming president and then coming to Scotland to find his father and being snubbed. I think all of that is just really fascinating and beautiful. Yes, how can I help you, sir? Mrs. John sent me, sir. You looking for big man John, sir? Yes, sir. That's an awful shame, son. You just missed him. Ace car must have passed you even. He's, he's been called away to Wigton. Although I work in theatre, I don't consider myself the best writer of plays. I try and write things that kind of like say what I want to say, and sometimes that has nothing to do with a traditional play structure. Or maybe it doesn't even make sense as a play. And so that experimentation is really exciting to me. And that's the way I work. And I love that about Maud. Like if you gave this play to anybody and went, is this a very theatrical? They'd probably be like, no. And that's not the point. The point is there is room for all of us to, as artists to explore different forms and, and understand that we explore them from our point of view and in terms of our history. And that that's valid And I think there's something about Maud who was this visual artist, photographer, should never have been writing a play, decides I'm going to write a play. And she writes this epic play, and that's important. It's about this being Maud's voice and her exploration of this form. I think, I think as artists, we should be free to do that. <laughs>